Mexico was home to a rich and ancient history of humans that tell wonders of stories, some understood and some still a mystery. Even the geographical wonders of the area have scientists chewing their nails, trying to discover the purpose and causes. From creepy dollhouses to churches isolated by lava, here are 15 shocking things recently discovered in Mexico. Creepy Dollhouse. It all began with a short TikTok video shared by user Fernando Mata, who maintains a regular social media segment dubbed Weird Things on Google Maps, where he studies and gradually zooms in on strange things. In one episode of his series, he featured an address in Mexico City where a creepy looking building has recently gone viral on the internet and his channel. According to the user and the footage, hundreds of old, dismembered dolls can be found hanging on the outside walls and fence around the building. It isn't hard to imagine why warning signs such as do not search for Avenida Iztacalco 9 on Google Maps before going to bed went viral on the internet. According to Mexican state media, that's a creepy doll decoration that's gained worldwide notoriety and thus awarded internet stardom on social media. Now let's get ready for today's missing topic. The world is full of wild things. The natural world presents just as much magic as any fantastical tale might. That is perhaps where all these authors got their inspirations for the fantastical tales. If this doesn't have the chosen chamber written all over it, what can? This photo was dropped with little context, but adds to the crazy and bizarre happenings that have occurred in the Mexican desert. Ever seen anything like this before? Have an idea what it could possibly be? Drop a line in the comments and don't forget to use hashtag missing topic to join in on the conversation. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? Mausoleum Mansions At the end of years dedicated to violence, crime and riches, Mexico's most powerful and famed drug lords then rest in peace in custom-built fancy mausoleums that cost more than an average family home in the capital city of Sinaloa. These people still find themselves gaudy and incendiary even in death. They've customized their own tombs and they're equipped with 24-hour air conditioning, Wi-Fi, bedrooms, kitchens, home cinemas, and other comforts for their families who come to visit their remains to relax in luxury. They really wanted their name to last through the generations with flamboyant displays of power and wealth like this. Mexico's most infamous and extensive mafias, the Sinaloa Cartel, is based in the state capital. The town's many cemeteries tell stories of drug lords' immense wealth and reach throughout the world. Some of these wild things cost in the upwards of $650,000, and that's just for a place for the body to remain forever. Crazy, right? Mm -hmm. Living Jewelry There's a species unprotected that people actually wear like jewelry. You heard that right. Despite the craziness that could possibly mean. The so-called Mekek living jewel of the Yucatans use originates back to a tale of love. Even with modern technology and the progressive animal movement seeking to stop the trade, the famed Mayan beetle continues. The tradition of carrying and decorating them with jewelry and other precious materials started in the late 19th century. Until today, it was possible to find this living wearable adorned with all sorts of things on its shell and thorax, a chain typically attached to its clothes. It should be worn on the left side of the woman's chest above the heart for protection. The studies also revealed that the fad boomed during the 19th century. It brought great wealth and prosperity to the region, but from corruption and greed. This paved way for luxurious transformations in the residents' everyday life, clothing, architecture, and traditions like this one. <laughs> pointy boots. There's one other fad that might leave you scratching your head. There are pointy dress shoes and then there are these Mexican traditional long shoes that really amp up the point. If you've never been wearing a pair of shoes and thought, I wish they were pointier, then you'll join the majority. Why this became a fad in the first place is just as puzzling as the fad itself. The boots, called botas pucudas, have transformed into a cultural phenomenon and were even the subject of multiple documentaries. The popularity of the dancers that wear them and their pointy boots has led to them being hired to dance for weddings and hen parties. They've opened up a whole new industry with this wild fad. Most pairs are actually just altered versions of typical cowboy boots. The pointy tips are added from cheaply bought supplies like screws, foam, and plastic. This new cosplay-esque design is hitting clubs all over the nation. 
with people coming up with some extremely interesting design choices. They look like they belong with some sort of Halloween costume, not a dance floor. They might poke someone's eyes out with how long some of them are. <laughs> World's fastest food. A human named Carney Garbadaldi holds the Guinness World Records for fastest service and as since 1996, we're talking a mere 13 and a half seconds from order until the food served hot hits the table in front of you. It isn't some fast food quality meal either. This is all farm fresh, delicious food to make it even crazier. That isn't just one dish either. That goes for a whole line of fast dishes on the menu. Because their traditional homemade dishes require hours of cooking and TLC to get all those flavors right, they're essentially ready to be served on arrival. They just need to pull out the fresh patch made in the morning, heat it up, and send it out the door. Plating the dishes alone with their healthy serving sizes and juicy juggling act in under 13 and a half seconds is a feat in it of itself. While many people just believe it's hype, they're still sending out dishes this fast and plan on doing so for as long as they're open. The official record also helps solidify their claim as legit. It just goes to show that you can still deliver. <laughs> Buried in a truck. What will you ask for at your funeral? Death is an inevitable part of life, so sometimes people like to go out with a bang and in death, let the people that still live what they loved in life, like this person here who loved driving. To show the world that he loved driving, his son actually buried him in his favorite pickup truck. A large grave was excavated in a local cemetery and lined with concrete blocks before a crane was brought in to lift the truck and place it inside. The final step before covering it was to lower the deceased's coffin into the cargo bed of the truck. Some observers applauded the gesture, but others weren't too keen on its legality. Local authorities were unaware of the construction of the tomb and there was no request for a permit. It was inspired by a similar story a few years back when the family of a South African politician fulfilled his desire to have him buried in a limousine instead of the usual coffin. Bank in the middle of nowhere. The president of Mexico received harsh backlash for wasting government funds on useless buildings. Whether it's useless is subjective, but a bank in the middle of nowhere seems a little nuts. People around the world are reacting to the viral photos and videos of the Banco del Bienestar branch located far, far away from any human civilization, somewhere in the remote Mexican state of Chihuahua. The building was used to mock the president's fourth transformation of Mexico initiative, but a representative of the bank quickly reached out to explain that although strange, the location of the branch actually makes sense, at least to them. A representative of the bank told press that the new branch was supposed to be built in a central area of Nuevo Casas Grandes, Chihuahua, but the mayor there refused to provide a plot of land for construction. On account, it was a corrupt deal, so the bank had no choice but to accept a piece of land donated by the army. <laughs> Ultramarathon winner in a dress and sandals. Winning an ultramarathon is a big deal, no matter what it is. Running it in a dress and sandals and finishing second is another game altogether. That's exactly what this woman did, and she stunned the world with her success and perseverance all the while. The world should take note to her work here. The last time she raced, she won second place in the 100 kilometer category of the Cabello Blanco Ultra Marathon in Chihuahua. She later reported that running is in the family, and they all do it to maintain their cattle and stay in shape. They aren't just in shape, they're in super shape. Her father, grandfather, and various brothers and sisters all share in the love of running. One brother also ran the marathon, with both of them having been provided support by organizers so they could attend. They traveled for more than two days from the site of the event and did so in casual clothes, while others boasted sporting clothes and performance gear. <laughs> Congress of Clowns Every year, people who love clowns or just want to act clownish from across Latin America gather in Mexico City for a week-long convention aimed at giving their passion the respect they feel it should get. If you're afraid of clowns, this is not the place to be. Nearly 10,000 clowns, of whom 3,000 were women, gather for the 15th International Congress of Clowns. The week-long event that takes place in downtown Mexico City became a really big circus show, and that's putting it lightly. Imagine 10,000 clowns walking around a city. They're bound to draw attention to themselves. All participants get together to share their amazing talents and propose new ideas for fresh takes on the clown industry. There are all sorts of clowny games to play there as well. For example, 700 clowns recently competed by laughing non-stop for as long as they could. The results were a whopping 15 minute long spree. They attempted to set the new world record for uninterrupted laughter. The previous record was for 20 minutes, so they have a little work to do. Hmm. 
Virgin Mary appears on the road. There are all sorts of religious apparitions that have supposedly taken place in Mexico. This is just the latest in a long history of such. Apparently, these people believe the Virgin Mary, mother of Jesus, was standing on the side of the road so they could capture her with their smartphone camera. Did she really show up just to make an internet viral sensation? If not, the person dressed up as such sure as heck did. It wasn't a person that showed up, but rather an image of her stained in a parking lot. The outdoor parking lot is found in Monterey and recently became a pilgrimage spot for Christians for obvious reasons. After the detailed drawing of the Virgin Mary appeared on the asphalt out of nowhere, you can imagine the same for anywhere in the world. Its origin was unknown at first, but after photos of this mysterious artwork and various studies were conducted, local authorities revealed that it had been stenciled during a celebration called Bella Via. Still, bizarre that this particular chalk drawing dates back to the 2007 festival and no one knows how the artwork has lasted this long already. Cursed Mannequin There's a local legend that states that the infamous La Pascualita is the preserved corpse of the original shop owner's daughter who died tragically on the day of her wedding and not just some realistic mannequin. Others aren't so convinced of it either. Preserved corpses are not an unheard of thing to do throughout human history, even today. There are even several popes you can see at the Vatican right now, and visitors flock from around the globe to see them, like Lenin's embalmed body in Moscow's Red Square. Despite the practice being somewhat morbid and seen as such more so today than ever, these bodies are maintained for the purpose of history and telling an important tale. La Pascualita isn't afforded such a luxury for existing but remains one of the most puzzling mysteries. The whole thing really is just a tragic behavior of a forever melancholic mother that couldn't bear to see her daughter pass or not see her face again. Despite the gruesome tale, the mannequin has become one of Mexico's most famous attractions. It's long had people wondering what the heck it is. People that have seen it up close often claim that it is a mannequin, but the most realistic one they've ever seen certainly more lifelike than anything some department store might have to market their clothing with. <laughs> Mayan ball game. Humans have long invented games to entertain and compete with one another, and then, if other nations pick up on those games, compete to see who can bring the heat. One of the earliest known forms of sports comes from the Mayans in the form of this ball game. There are depictions of the members of tribe playing games, even tournaments. It's the earliest known form of any ball sport. The Mayans were genius scientists, architects, artists, mathematicians, and astronomers who could predict phenomena such as eclipses, but they still found time to play some sports and games. The walls of their arenas reveal a story about the game, which they refer to as Pak to Pak. They call it that because of the noise the ball produced when it was stuck by the players on the floor. The ball court could be found at the base of the temple and represented a strange underworld fashioned from a sunken shape that could elude the eye of the underworld. The arena walls were engraved with figures of many Mayan gods and demons. It had a ring that the players had to pass the ball through. The platforms around it were for residents, governors, and priests to observe the match. The ball embodied the paths of the sacred stars, Sun, Moon, and Venus. It was assumed to be made of rubber, measured around 35 centimeters, and weighed around 3 kilograms, without air. <laughs> Night of the Radishes There is an amazing yet bizarre festival called the Night of the Radishes that takes place in Mexico. Otherwise known as Noche de los Rabonos, the festival is held every December 23rd in Oaxaca City. The extraordinary event sees thousands of sculpted radish art Anything from artwork displaying mythical creatures to scenes of ordinary life here on Earth, and you can find it here at the festival. A competition even takes place that votes for the best sculpture of that year, and a victor is crowned. The festivities date all the way back to 1897, when the mayor, Francisco, decided to make the contest part of that year's Christmas market special, which already stored and sold goods like flowers, herbs, ingredients, and living decorations. Some radishes had, as long as people have lived there and called it a home, been vital to the Christmas cuisine and thriving as a city. The ingredient and decorative garnish was seen by all as a fun way to promote local agriculture and inspire tourism. Island of the Dolls 
Couldn't it have been an island of unicorns or something cute and cuddly? It just had to be nightmarish, freakish dolls strewn about the entirety of the island. The story is a long and tragic one. While walking through the creaking trees and lush vegetation that blankets the island, you might also notice the hundreds of child dolls tied or in some way stuck up the trees. If this doesn't make you want to head for the hills immediately, you might be curious as to their purpose. The amazing legend of La Isla de la Muñecas on the island of the dolls states that the island was once home to a hermit man named Don Julian Santana nearly 50 years ago. He lived in relative isolation. Not full hermit, he indeed spent most of his time on the island itself, alone, but would venture away and into town from time to time. Locals knew of this man and his workings. Local store owners reported that he could often come into town claiming to have seen a girl drowning in the lake and was acting strange and upset about it. He asked all the residents whether their daughter was missing. According to the hermit, he rushed to save her, but it was too late, and she washed away by the storming water. After his failure to save her, he decided to dedicate his life to appeasing her tormented spirit. He felt compelled to appease the spirit. The residents never reported any missing children, and some questioned whether she existed at all. Unconvinced of his peers' disregard of the tragedy, he started putting up dolls around the island to make her happy. He wanted to make her happy in death where he couldn't save her in life. If you think humans have learned all there is to learn about our planet, you better think again. Heck, this list alone proves we have plenty to learn about just one country, let alone the entire planet and its ancient history. It's safe to say that humans may never know the full truth of everything, but all we can do is try and keep on chugging forward. While this video only demonstrates a few of the many things still to be revealed in Mexico, we have to take credit for the accomplishments we have achieved as well. You have to look at all the positive too, otherwise the long haul seems impossible. So long as humans maintain an inquisitive mind and the will and bravery to explore new places, fresh and exciting things will forever be revealed. If you enjoyed the video, smash that like button. And don't forget to subscribe to get all our content delivered right to your inbox.